Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking simple skincare. And I'm specifically talking about skincare products with short and minimal ingredients lists that don't contain common irritants like drying forms of alcohol, essential oils, artificial fragrance, or excessive plant extracts. I was recently doing a skincare consult, which I do offer, by the way, if you're looking for some personal guidance from me on your skincare routines, um, that link is in the the description box if you want to check that out but recently I was doing a skincare consult kind of overhauling a skincare routine and really taking out some of the common irritants and I really had to rack my brain for these really minimal very gentle simple skincare products that would help this client really um, heal their moisture barrier and really get to a good place with their skin so that they could start to work on their other skincare goals and that really is what inspired this video is like hey I have this huge resource of all of these really gentle minimal products that don't contain these common irritants. I definitely want to put them all together in one resource. So that's what today's video is all about. And hey, by the way, this isn't the total focus of the video, but if you do have sensitivities to niacinamide and hyaluronic acid, I do want to tell you this video could be really great for you because most of the products, there's a few, I will point them out, there's a few that actually don't contain these ingredients, which are increasingly becoming common irritants um, because of that compounding effect of those ingredients being in every single skincare routine. So just wanted to point that one out for you. This video could be very helpful. So without further ado, if you want to learn all all about simple, gentle skincare products that I recommend. Give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump in. So let's start off with toners. This is the Etude House Soon Jung Relief Toner. And this is such a simple formula that really just focuses in on hydrating the skin and helping to gently calm it. They are harnessing the power of centella, which is a really great plant extract, but it's not a fragrant plant extract. It has a really beautiful healing and soothing quality for the skin. And this toner is so great too, because I think it's gonna work for a majority of skin types. It has this really watery texture that's quickly absorbed into the skin. Now, this doesn't have any slip. It doesn't have any body. It doesn't have like a gel-like feeling. It doesn't feel heavy. So this is something once you apply it, it just goes right into the skin, deeply hydrates it without any kind of filmy layer on top. Now, there are two different versions of this toner. The original relief version has a little bit of centella. The centella relief version has more centella in it, um, but I find the textures identical. I find the hydration levels identical. I honestly don't see the biggest difference here, but I think the advantage is if you know your skin and you know you do good with a little bit of centella, but not a lot of centella, you've got some options here between the two. So I think that this can be a really great place to start for that really minimal toner that gently soothes and deeply hydrates. Round Lab 1025 Docto Toner. Now this is another one that really delivers deep hydration in like a almost universal texture. It's gonna work for any skin type in my opinion. Now there's some really great hydrating ingredients in here including panthenol, glycerin, and betaine and it really does dive deep into the skin so if you have dehydrated skin I think you might enjoy this one because sometimes you just need that deeper hydration and I think this really provides it nicely. There's some seaweed content in here and that can be a really great balancing ingredient. This also contains seawater and elantuin. Both are actually soothing ingredients, quite healing for irritated skin. And this also contains sugarcane extract. And this is kind of interesting to see in toners because it has the, the most gentle, um, very, very, very slight clarifying effect for the skin. It's not exfoliation. It's not full on chemical exfoliation, but just gently encourages um, excessive dead skin cells to shed away from the skin. And so it can um, definitely be nice for like a little bit of a smoother feeling to your skin. If you struggle with texture, this might be helpful alongside of other uh, ingredients too. You don't want to put all of your, you know, your eggs into the sugar cane uh, nest. It's not that amazing. It's just a slight benefit that you might see with this toner. But sugar cane is also a really great a hydrating ingredient as as well and it all comes together in this beautiful watery as I mentioned universal texture quickly absorbed in the skin no body no slip no moisture easily layered onto the skin without building up any type of filminess so another one um, that's great to go for for it's really like simple formula but another great one for deep hydration now say you love moisturizing milky toners I've got you covered with the Purito Oats in Silky Toner now 
this is a really simple formula here. They're using glycerin, beta-glucan to really hydrate the skin. Beta-glucan is a really nice alternative ingredient to hyaluronic acid, um, which can sometimes create some inflammation in sensitive individuals. Um, beta-glucan, I think a little bit more gentle, it's often derived from oats, or uh, in this case, it's derived from oats. Sometimes you can get it from mushrooms as well. And it's one of those um, humectant ingredients that attracts and binds hydration into the skin has a little bit of like a, a, a bouncy gel-like consistency to it, so it can kind of plump the skin as well. All similar qualities to hyaluronic acid without that pro-inflammatory effect um, for certain, you know, sensitive individuals. Now, of course, we've got oat in here, right? We've got oat water as well as oat extract, and oat is a really wonderful soothing ingredient. Um, great if you have some redness or inflammation on the skin, it's often recommended for eczema-prone skin, right? But it's also a gentle moisture moisturizing ingredient as well. It really balances out the skin. It's not an oily ingredient, but it's just kind of like, ah, soothes and comforts the skin with this gentle hug and kiss of moisture that feels amazing. They're also using meadow foam seed oil in here and this is one of my favorite lightly moisturizing ingredients. I see it used in a lot of watery types of formulas because it does have a lightness. This is not a heavy, rich, greasy, overwhelming type of oil. It actually plays really well, like I said, in these watery types of formulas and this just gives us that kiss of richness and you can see it in the texture. It's watery, milky, almost like a skim milk type of texture. It does not have a lot of body to it, but as it absorbs into the skin, you get that burst of hydration first, and then this kiss of moisture that just like envelops your skin, just that hint of richness from the meadow foam seed oil, but it's not greasy. It feels really comforting, very soothing, just not heavy on the skin. Let's talk serums next. This is the Make Preem Comfort Me Panthenol Moisture Essence. So this actually doesn't contain a super high amount of panthenol. It's actually just one 1.1%. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but let's not be percentage queens here. Any little bit of panthenol I think is a good amount, quite honestly. It's a beautiful humectant for the skin. Again, attracting and binding water to help hydrate the skin, right? Similar mechanism to hyaluronic acid, but I actually find it more beneficial than hyaluronic acid because it has an additional benefit of helping to support the lipids in your skin. Now, the lipids in your skin are what make up your skin's moisture barrier, and that's what holds hydration in place place. This also includes maticasicide, which is one of the four biologically active compounds found in the centella plant. You know, centella is so well known for its soothing abilities. Well, these four active compounds are like taking the most concentrated active, right? What's working for our skin. Um, parts of the plant and, and applying it directly to the skin. So we're not getting all that extra fragrance and all of that. We're really just getting the soothing mechanism, the anti-inflammatory mechanism. Metacasticide is actually a really nice antioxidant for the skin as well. And so it really helps to soothe and calm irritated skin. This also includes some Ceramide NP, another a great ingredient to help support your moisture barrier. I love the texture of this because while it does look like creamy, and maybe even a little bit heavy and moisturizing, it actually has this really hydrating, um, plump and bouncy kind of quality to it. Um, it definitely does deliver a deep amount of hydration, surprisingly, like a like a deep brush of water into the skin, first and foremost. But because we've got those creamy emulsion-like elements, as it is settling onto the skin, you get this really beautiful hug of moisture that just kind of fills every little crack in your skin. If you have dry skin, you know exactly what I mean by crack cracks in your skin. It just fills all those little dry areas on your skin really lightly. It's not an oily kind of feel. It's not overly rich, but it just gently balances and fills every little dry area, comforts and soothes it. Next, let's talk about the iUnique Beta-Glucan Power Moisture Serum. Now this contains 40% of beta-glucan, which I've already covered as a really nice alternative to hyaluronic acid. It really helps you hydrate the skin. It has kind of a plump sort of feeling to it. It's really juicy type of ingredient, but it also has a kind of very gentle soothing effect to it as well. They have combined the beta-glucan along with adenosine, which is a cell communicating ingredient that really helps to calm inflammation on the skin. It can also act as an antioxidant and it may also play a role in collagen and elastin production. And there's some other great humectants in here like glycerin and sodium PCA. And what we get is this really beautiful gel 
gel like texture and this is an interesting medium kind of gel texture because we have like this hydrating plumping quality but we also have this kind of like balancing quality it's not so thin and so watery um, it definitely does have that little bit of balance that's not oily that's not greasy right um, but a really medium gel quality that feels really great on the skin um, I do have combination skin so this doesn't overwhelm oily areas but it feels really nice on the dry areas too I think that beta glucan just I think suits a multitude of skin types and it just feels really nice I've already mentioned it as a great alternative to hyaluronic acid but I think if you like snail mucin or maybe you want to use snail mucin but for whatever reason it doesn't agree with your skin there's a couple alternatives to snail but I think beta glucan can be a really nice one because I find the the hydration and balancing powers of this particular beta glucan serum to be on par with like the Cosrx snail essence really similar types of qualities that it brings into the skin I know we're talking two different ingredients but when I'm talking about that feel it's actually very very similar and uh, again this type of texture I think will work for a multitude of skin types. Next, let's talk about the Cosrx Propolis Light Ampule. Now, as I mentioned, um, this is not a hyaluronic acid-free video per se. There was just a few products that had it, and this is the very first one that we've encountered. There's a little bit of sodium hyaluronic here, but the main star ingredient is the 83% of Propolis, and I'm obsessed with Propolis. <laughs> I have been for many years because it's one of those really great ingredients, multitude of benefits, but it's particularly helpful for inflamed skin skin for um, acne prone skin because it has antibacterial benefits it also has um, wound healing uh, benefits can be very helpful if you do have some like popped pimples or some areas where the skin kind of broke with your with your breakouts right but it also has this really beautiful effect of like brightening the the complexion it really brings out that inner glow to your skin um, it's just a really fantastic ingredient with a, a gorgeous balancing quality to it as well most propolis products have kind of that medium gel texture like the beta glucan does but a little bit more of a kiss of moisture to it now quickly the texture of the Cosrx ampule as I mentioned it is a medium gel texture but it has some moisture to it and so I think that that makes it maybe not the most appropriate choice for very oily folks or those who just don't like a lot of moisture or a lot of heft you know what I mean like weight on the skin even though they call this the light ampule I do still find this to be more in the medium side of things. Propolis is just a little bit more of like, I'm doing this with my hands, a little heftier kind of ingredient, generally speaking. So I just wanna make you aware that it's not the lightest propolis serum out there. Um, but generally speaking, I think combination folks, it's not the most rich propolis um, serum out there. I think that's where they're getting the light from. Dry skin folks, I think you'll like this too, cause that little bit of moisture is really nice, but it's not overly rich, just so you know. Um, but overall, I think it's a really nice expression of a simple Simple, you know um, serum that focuses in mainly on propolis let's talk moisturizers one that I've really been obsessed with for the last few years is the Cetaphil moisturizing cream this is such a simple drugstore moisturizer but that's actually what I really like in moisturizers I like really simple and to the point kinds of creams and I really like to see a mix of humectants those hydrating kind of water binding ingredients emollients and I like a good amount of occlusivity something that just hugs and seals everything in and this does exactly that in like the simplest straightforward formulation so ingredients we have uh, glycerin and panthenol for that hydrating effect dimethicone and petrolatum just help to hug and seal everything in and then on the emollient side that kind of moisturizing skin conditioning side we have sweet almond oil and they are also using some niacinamide to help strengthen and fortify the moisture barrier again I mentioned uh, hyaluronic acid and niacinamide are increasingly becoming ingredients that a lot of people are looking to avoid either because of, of sensitivities or because of that compounding effect of those popular ingredients being in your toner and your in your cleanser and your serum and your moisturizer and your sunscreen it's like too much altogether right very first product that we're talking about today with niacinamide so I do want to point that out um, but it can if you're not sensitive it can actually be a really nice ingredient for your skin's moisture barrier the texture here is so interesting because it's not like that fluffy traditional type of cream texture it actually almost is like a creamy 
balmy kind of ointmenty kind of feel to it. It's a really unique feel, um, but that actually translates to a cream that doesn't feel really greasy. You know, sometimes creams have like a real heavy oil kind of feel to them. Um, they're really silky and they're really rich, um, and that may not be appropriate for all seasons or all skin types. This actually has like a um, a really pleasing balancing kind of feel. You get the burst of hydration with the glycerin for sure. Um, you get this really nice smoothing effect from the almond oil, but it's not its not an oily. You can't really detect the oil. If you didn't see it in the ingredients list, I bet you wouldn't guess it's in there, but it has this really nice smoothing skin softening effect. And then there's this like um, semi-matte finish to this because the petrolatum and the dimethicone really create this nice uh, finish that you don't get this shiny effect. It just kind of smooths your skin and it feels really good it's medium on the skin it's not heavy but it's actually very protective if you suffer with trans epidermal water loss this is the kind of like balance of ingredients you really should be seeking out those really good occlusives help hug everything in but the the humectants hydrate the skin the emollients soften the skin underneath that that occlusive layer it feels so so good let's talk geek and gorgeous hydration station now this is a really interesting very simple moisturizer that focuses in on 6% of glycerin. This is such a great ingredient. You're probably already a fan because if you like simple skincare, you already know that glycerin is simple but effective and there's nothing wrong with simple, right? I love glycerin because it's probably one of the best uh, humectants for the skin. It really brings in a lot of hydration. It's actually a soothing ingredient too. It actually is, is so beneficial for the skin. 6% is actually quite a bit of glycerin. And they're also combining the glycerin with ectoin, which is a really potent antioxidant. It's actually a really well-rounded ingredient. It has anti-inflammatory benefits. Um, it helps to protect the skin from, from UV damage. It's, again, an antioxidant. It helps to strengthen your skin barrier. It has well-aging properties. It is just like a really great ingredient to, to find really in any skincare product. It's not super duper common, although it's becoming more popular, um, to have it married with this really simple ingredient like glycerin I think is great. We also have bisabolo and elantoin, which are great soothing ingredients. Now the texture is a really interesting texture because it's a gel like cream texture that bursts into hydration. You feel every percentage of that glycerin in this and it's such a beautiful deep drink of water for the skin with this little rich silky aftertaste. Like after you get that burst of hydration, just very light moisture just at the top of the skin. This is something, you know, where Cetaphil is a little bit more appropriate for very dry, um, you know, leaning folks. I think that the uh, Hydration Station Moisturizer is a little bit more for those leaning a little bit more on the oily side because there's not a ton of emolliency here. There's not a lot of occlusivity or anything like that in here. It's just really hydrating, plumping, just lightly moisturizing a uh, final layer for the skin. Next, let's talk sunscreens. This is the Good All Heart Leaf Calming Moisture Sun Cream. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus 4 protection. Now, this is a sunscreen that has recently changed its name. It was called the Hutania Cordata a Calming Sun Cream. They recently changed the name to be easier to pronounce, right? To the Heart Leaf Calming Moisture Sun Cream. Uh, the ingredients actually have not changed. They slightly updated the packaging, but I have confirmed nothing has changed with the formulation. So all of my prior reviews still stand, which I'm very excited about because I love this sunscreen. So it's a chemical sunscreen. It uses four uh, all new generation chemical filters to create the protection. And as you see from the ingredients list, it's very minimal. Um, a lot of especially Korean sunscreens will pack in a lot of plant extracts, which we've pretty much avoided for the most part throughout these product uh, recommendations, right? Um, they'll pack in niacinamide, which can actually be helpful for sunscreen formulation. But as I've mentioned, a few times already. Some people are just really wanting to avoid the multiple niacinamide, you know, products layered in each and every day. So no niacinamide in here, no hyaluronic acid in here. Really simple, straight to the point. And I love the texture of this too because I find it so uncomplicated. And you know, sunscreen textures can be kind of complicated. I mean, first and foremost, sunscreen can cause white casts. It can cause peeling. It can um, just feel like really greasy and weird on the skin. None of those things are occurring with this sunscreen. Thank <laughs> you. 
texture wise, it's not so heavy and moisturizing. It's actually a really light, almost essence -y kind of a texture, um, like a gel cream. It spreads in a really nice thin but protective layer and it dries uh, quite quickly, I feel like, on the skin with minimal shine. There might be a little bit of dewiness, but it's not overly greasy and shiny like some sunscreens are. Now, if you like mineral sunscreen, I have a suggestion. It is the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Natural Sun Cream. This is SPF 50 plus PA plus four using zinc oxide for the protection. There's this kind of like tricky way that formulators can use plant extracts to either mask like the raw skincare smells. Cause if you've used fragrance free skincare, you know, sometimes they don't smell pleasant. They're not always scentless, right? Sometimes they have that like, like plasticky kind of smell. And I know that's a turnoff for a lot of people. Um, so there's ways that you can formulate with plant extracts that mask that. Um, so it, it just becomes a neutral type of thing, right? Or a very, very lightly scented thing. But there's also ways we can use plant extracts that have those fragrant abilities to impart a gentle smell scent or fragrance to the product without having to label like the word fragrance or you know using essential oils or things like that because the plant extracts are what have that fragrant ability to it and that's why i did not want to include a lot of heavy plant extract types of products in this video because if there's a scent and you're sensitive, those little compounds, even in the extracts, will not as pronounced and as concentrated as artificial fragrance, perfume, or essential oils could still cause some issues on very sensitive individuals. And a lot of my favorite mineral sunscreens have them in them. <laughs> and I find that kind of tricky. I don't think it's shady, right? I, I think it's just a form, it's just a way to formulate skincare that generally makes it more pleasing to more people. This isn't shady, but it's tricky when you have those sensitivities. So luckily this um, is a very, very minimal, like to non-existent with the plant extracts with the formula here. There is a white cast. Um, I find this one interesting because the white cast is worse when you first apply it. And then when you wait and let it settle and dry on your skin, the white cast lessens in about like five to 10 minutes. It does kind of fade away. It's still kind of there on my skin tone, but it's so much more improved. So I just kind of like the texture of this too, cause it's not really dry and chalky. It's not hard to spread on the skin like some mineral sun creams can have that feeling to it it does have kind of like a dewy kind of finish to it it's not super shiny but it definitely has like a uh, a dew to it um mineral sunscreens definitely have drawbacks but they have pros as well and this is again one of my favorite ones if you want to dive a little deeper into this one because the video is probably getting kind of long i do have a dedicated video review that you can check out you know how hard it is to cater to everybody's individual sensitivities, but I hope that I did a pretty good job at presenting a nice general uh, overview of some really nice, simple, and gentle skincare products. And I love the community that we've built. So you know, I'm always going to ask you, what are your favorite simple and gentle products? Maybe something I didn't cover in today's video. Definitely help us all out. Drop your resources in the comments below. Now, if you loved this video, it was helpful for you, but maybe you haven't hit subscribe yet, please, before you go, I would be so honored if you would hit subscribe subscribe and join our community. We're actually really, really helpful here, especially if you do love gentle skincare, if you love K-beauty products, um, if you love ingredient deep diving, that's what my channel is all about. So definitely uh, hit subscribe and turn on notifications because I release a lot of new skincare content throughout the week. I do long form videos. I do shorts. I have a video skincare podcast as well. Super active here on YouTube. So hit notifications so you're never out of the loop. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I love you so much. You know that this channel is not possible without you. I'm so grateful for you, and I really hope that you are healthy, happy, and safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.